Meet me. Welcome back, boys, to a mini guide video. I got a question um, from a viewer who said, Hey, I'm struggling in Guild Wars. I'm losing a lot, and my guild is getting mad at me. Uh, what can I do to get better at Guild Wars? And I have a really old video on top 10 tips for Guild Wars offense, so I checked that out. But I was thinking, what's the most common mistake that I even see like my own guildies make? Um, the most important rule for Guild Wars offense. And I think the simplest rule that a lot of people don't follow, that all really top tier Guild Wars people follow, is very simple. It's, I'm going to tell you right now, the rule is assume everything will go wrong. This is the most common mistake I see in Guild Wars offense, because when people fail their attacks, like their teams are sometimes on paper okay like uh you know like this one is okay but i'm i'm guessing he just got really badly rng'd right but that kind of stuff happens all the time um i've lost to it it happens even to really great guild wars people so when i say assume everything can go wrong you have to craft a guild wars offense where you know basically you assume that Everything that you need to land won't land. Everything that the other team needs to land will land. If all those things happen, do you still have a chance? Like a lot of people, like a perfect example is something like this. People just be like, oh, it's a cleave team. I have a fast unit. I'm going to bring it. But you should never do that. If you're going to speed contest defenses, you better know exactly what their speed is because a guildie reported it and be at least 15 speed faster than that to account for speed RNG. But when people fail their attacks consistently, that's almost always the mistake. They made assumptions that were incorrect. Or they'll do something like assume, and we're going to show an example of this later, assume that they know the speeds. Like here, you know, let's say you bring like an Oxlots Opsig Cleave for this one. Be like, oh, that'll be okay. I'm going to outspeed it. But who knows? This could be a 290 speed RB. Is that likely? No. So if you're the first person to hit it, you should always use something very safe. Um, once you have guild notes on your Discord and you know the entire defense's speeds, then you could come up with very fast offenses. Because if you know you outspeed this, you could just cleave it down, right? And you know it's not on MLDB or whatever. But as the first attacker, you never have that information. So it's best to use something super safe like Ruel, DC, Crow, or something like that. Because a lot of people will build really weirdly built units to trip up common counters like Landy FCC. I've seen a lot of people build like 300 speed Landys just to throw off like Oxlots cleaves and uh, kill you in the opener. So overall, that is the most important rule about Guild Wars offense, assuming everything will go wrong. A lot of people will make offenses like, uh, you know, um, AOL or something where you're like, oh, I'm just going to unbuffable them and I'm going to win. But then they get triple resisted on unbuffable and it's an automatic loss. These are bad offenses. 15% um, doesn't sound like a lot, but you know, over the course of a season, you're doing a lot of guild wars. And 15%, if you're relying on that, basically it means what? Like one in six, one in seven matches, you're just going to lose to bad luck. Uh, in a top guild, that'll probably just get you kicked overall. My guild's pretty casual, so we don't care. We let people do whatever they want. But in a top guild, if you're losing one in seven times... My assumption is you're going to get the boot hammer pretty quick. So if you're really trying to win, um, make sure that you're assuming everything's going to go wrong and still making a team that has a high chance to win anyway. So again, there's a situation where stuff goes so wrong that you can't win. But, you know, usually if you have a good enough team, if it goes 80% wrong, you should still be able to win. And we'll show you examples of teams that can't lose, teams that might lose if you have um, bad luck or, you know, you misread the defense. So let's just go straight into matches now. All right, so we talked about how you should assume that everything will go wrong. Um, some people, like I said, are way too optimistic about how the fights are going to go. So let's theory craft before we even start this match the worst case scenario for the top team and why we basically can't lose. So what's the worst case scenario? Cerise lands every debuff, Summer Isaria gets bombs on everything, and Apoc Ravi doesn't really matter what she does. But let's theory craft this, right? So let's say Cerise lands everything, 
and bombs go on LQC and maid. Um, my maid is likely going to resist it, but let's just assume that she gets bombed. Summer Saria sets it off. Both maid and LQC are brought down. There's no way a bomb with no attack buff from a Summer Saria will one-shot either of these heroes, right? But let's say it gets them really low. She detonates them, and one of two things will happen. Either Epoch Ravi uh, kills the LQC, because at, at that point it'll do enough damage for her to finish it off, or she'll kill the maid. But if you look at that situation, either way we win, right? Because Apoc Ravi won't go on Mediator Cowric, so if Maid dies, then Mediator, Mediator Cowric cleanses LQC, and then LQC bombs Apoc Ravi, and these guys can 2v2 these two. Or, the other situation is Apoc Ravi kills LQC, uh, Mediator Cowric cleanses Maid, Maid revives LQC, and then LQC bombs the Apoc Ravi. So you see, in either situation, basically we win. And the bottom one, that's just going to be really easy because uh, Rem's just going to destroy this even if Mercedes hits me every time. And it's almost good if Mercedes hits me because then I could just horse something. And uh, I think the team just doesn't have enough damage. But let's see in practice how that plays out. And you're going to see that the top team literally cannot lose against this defense. So blam. See what happens. Yeah, my me just resists everything. Uh, you know what? <laughs> so, we planned for the worst case scenario, but this is as good as it's gonna get, right? They landed zero bombs. We cleanse everything. Epoch Ravi will go on LQC, I think. And, uh, you're gonna see that there's... Absolutely no problem here. It's already GG. So, their only real DPS. I'm gonna rip her face off. 40,000 damage. We'll switch to the Isaria. That's almost dead now. We have immunity, so they can't even stun anything really. And as you can see, we're. Going to win here with, like, 100% HP. Let's just go on Cerise. And then bonk the Aceria. And clobber the Cerise. Alright, for the second one, <clears throat> like I said, they just don't have enough damage. We have two water units and a Ruel. Um, Kisei can't reset anything except Rem, and we don't care if she resets Rem. There we go, we get a counter right away. The stealth is gone. And once we kill Kisei, we'll get demon form. And it just gets even easier. So if Rem dies, that's fine. But I don't think she will. Okay. Uh, it doesn't really matter. We don't want to heal the Crow here, right? Because we want her to stay low. We'll push this back. You can see Crow starting to take some damage. Oop. Finish the Kisei. And now we have demon form, and it's game over. Uh, could heal Crow, but we're not. Ooh, see that's what I'm talking about. There's always the potential for bad dual attacks. All right, and what should we do here? We're actually just gonna kill the uh, FCC. And there's no way Rem is not going to be able to solo this. We don't even have to heal here, but just to be careful, let's heal up Ruel. And as you could see, this is pretty much over. We didn't lose a single unit. And that had some pretty bad RNG too, right? Like, uh, got those dual attacks and stuff. But, boop, boop, boop. 
Gets brought back. Still have all our souls. Here's a counter. This isn't doing enough damage. We'll heal up our whole team. And <laughs> it's pretty much a wrap now. This Mercedes is actually pretty well geared. Alright, let's try another one. Alright, let's look at the next one. This is the Stronghold. We're going to get creative. So apparently this is a very fast Belion. There's a lot of ways to tackle this team, right? And my team looks dumb, but I'm going to explain it. So because there's a Rem and a Belion, the win condition is if Mercedes dies, I basically cannot lose, right? So what am I bringing here? Rimuru, because he can hit fire units 100% with the S3. And because he can counter the Belion and steal buffs so I do more damage. These two have immunity, Violet doesn't, so he might get hit in the opener, but it's not a big deal. And the idea is pop the Mercedes with Rimuru or ML Kawazu, and then finish her off with the other one. I don't know what the turn order will be, but the point is Mercedes will die in the opener, and then Violet can easily solo Blind and Rem. Rem will basically just heal Violet, so I don't care if these two die, because I don't need them for Guild Wars. The second one looks weird, right? It's like, why are you bringing Mediator, Cowric, and Champ Z? Well, again, I'm planning for the worst case scenario. Now, really, this would work, right? This honestly works most of the time. But there are cases like you got to plan for the worst case scenario. What if Cerise gets uh, resistant? Champsy resists both of Cerise's debuffs, resists the bombs, and never counters. Then we're kind of in a bad spot, right? So we're bringing Mediator Cowork just in case to cleanse everything because all three of these cannot one shot through FCC anything. And the thing is, if it's a standard speed RB, we can just kill the RB anyway, and then these two can't do anything, because they'll start debuffing Champsy eventually and die. So let's see this in practice, but this team should be 100% pretty much. So let's see. Let's see the fast Belion. As expected, uh, my guildie was correct. It's a very fast Belion. Counter here. We get Vigor up. She actually didn't have any buffs, so we didn't do anything, but that's okay. Mercedes will die here. She procced a counter, which is good, actually. Actually, no, it's not good, but doesn't matter. Now let's finish her off. They're, they actually built an anti Rimuru team because they have no buffs. But Mercedes is dead. And now, uh... Basically, we can't lose, right? If this Rem counters and the Lion counters every time or whatever, like, uh, still, we should be Gucci. As you can see, my Violet got hit. She even procs the S2. But Rimuru gets pushed up. I think we might not even lose anyone. We finish off the Rem, and uh, at this point, yeah, there's really no way to lose. Maybe we lose Rimuru, but he might actually even survive this. Alright, so nice and easy, even though it didn't go according to plan because uh, they didn't have any buffs, which is kind of weird. Alright, let's see this one. Let's see if it goes ideally. Ideally, Champsy just counters everything in the beginning and they just die. Okay. The bomb... Do not go... See? The bombs did not go on Champ Z. They went on FCC. But we got weakened attack. Now we have weakened attack on Arby. And this is why we brought ML Cowork. Now we have immunity, so we don't have to worry about being locked down. So yes, Champ Z cannot... Um, counter right now, but if Summerside Asaria hits him, she'll strip the immunity. Also, we don't really need it, because now it's a DPS race that we're gonna win, so we're actually just gonna finish off Arby. We have Skill Nullifier, so even with this Gab, can't do anything. We can't be slowed or anything because of immunity right now. And then we do this. We have the attack buff from Mediator Coward, so we're actually doing very good damage. Summerside area goes down, and look, they're just doing zero damage to us. 
This team doesn't have enough damage to Buster his tanky team, and we're basically going to win at 100% HP. Boop. And there you go, another clean one. Let's go on to the third fight. Alright, so none of the forts are open, so we're going to hit a random tower. Let's look at these defenses, and I'm going to take a risk on the bottom one. I'm going to explain why. So this top one is a terrible, terrible defense. Why? Because I could literally beat it with just that. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. As for the bottom one, I'm taking a risk here, right? Because theoretically, if this is like a 280 landy, I'm going to lose, right? But I don't think it is. We're going to take the risk. Also, my op sig is on speed gear, so I might not actually be able to one-shot the Rimuru. But in practice, this is a very common defense. FCC landy. And if this thing is something that could be one-shotted by Opsig, which it generally is, this team is 100% against it. So let's see if this works. And I'm 100% sure the top team is going to win. I actually don't know about the bottom one because I could theoretically lose if it's a super fast landy or if it's a super tanky Rimuru. But that's the thing, you just have to understand the risks, right? So... I'm really not concerned, because um, I really doubt that's a super fast landy, and even if it is, Carrot could theoretically maybe solo, but we'll find out. And as you can see, this is just going to be uh, a massacre here. So never have triple same element defenses, otherwise something like this is going to happen to your defense. Like, there's no way that he could beat me. All right, Amelia will be forced to attack me soon as well. Rem has a 0% chance of hitting my Violet, which means she's dead. Whap, whap. Whap, whap. And Cyanorus. <laughs> Not only was it a 1v3, it was actually extremely fast and efficient. All right, let's look at the next one. I think this is going to be a very quick one as well. All right, so it was not a super fast landy. Doesn't even have guiding light, actually. And now we just boop, boop, boop. Boop, boop, boop. Rimuru is dead. We do this. We give Carrot the attack buff, push them back, and get a little bit of damage out. And then we do this. Leap. Landy's going to die, so we could just hit FCC. And boop, we could have soul burned that, but there's no need. And there you go. So these are just three quick examples of how to build um, Guild Wars offenses and adjust them to the defense. As you can see, on Guild Wars offense, as long as you have the right hero pool and the right strategy, it should be 100% for a lot of defenses and like 95% for very strong defenses where there's some RNG involved. Like sometimes you're going to lose because you get the worst RNG. They counter 100% of the time and it's like their whole team is on unity set and you get dual attack six times in a row and die. It's just going to happen. But if you have the right strategies overall in Guild Wars, if you have decent enough gear, um... You should be able to maintain, at a bare minimum, an 80% win rate, but really at the higher end, it should be closer to 90. And I'm sure in like the top three guilds or whatever, a lot of those players maintain close to 100% win rates because they're being very careful about each match and theory crafting every defense to figure out the worst possible um, outcome of RNG that can happen and making a team that could beat it anyway. Alright, so to sum this video up, I'm going to go over a bunch of my previous Guild Wars matches and rate my own offense and, you know, try to use that logic to figure out was it a bulletproof offense or not. So top, 100% there was no way my team was going to lose unless this Landy outsped my Oxloth. But remember, I'm in a guild where we share guild notes about defenses a lot of the time. So I probably knew that my Oxlots would not be outsped by this Landy. If I don't get outsped, there's a 0% chance I lose to this defense. For the bottom one, pretty much the same thing. There was a risk here, right? Because um, 
theoretically the bomb could have one-shotted my ML Selene, but through Aureus and um, Barrier, because Cerise can't strip the Barrier, probably not, because you'd have to do like 14k damage worth of bombs or something, and as long as this Apoc Ravi didn't cut my ML Selene, that also had a 100% chance of victory, so... I don't know because I don't remember the guild notes, but I'd say both these offenses were pretty solid. For the top one, that's pretty much 100% as well. Um, worst case scenario is that they, my lose condition would be they literally never land any debuffs on Sham Z and he never counters. But even then, if Crowd just takes out the Belion, um, eventually, you know... It would, have, it would be like a 1% chance that these guys never land anything on Champ Z, and these two don't do enough damage to ever kill a Champ Z, so really the Beline would be the only way to lose if she hit Champ Z a million times, never procced her S2. So this is pretty close to 100%. Now the bottom one, I'd grade this offense like a B-. This is the kind of offense that gets people in trouble, right? So it looks like I got lazy and used it, but let's see. What's the problem with this offense? I'm very reliant on AOL landing unbuffable on BBK and ML Selene, right? Well, I guess the ML Selene doesn't matter too much, but definitely the BBK. Why? Let's say I get 15%ed on BBK. Tomoka and Rimuru both don't have a strip, right? So I'm going to get one-shotted by this BBK. Like, a Tomoka is not going to survive a BBK S3. So I'm assuming that... My strategy here was this, land unbuffable and strip the immortality off BBK, one-shot BBK with Tomoka, and an S3, the ML Selene with Rimuru. But honestly, that also could have been bad, because what if my Rimuru couldn't one-shot the ML Selene for some reason, because I didn't have enough buffs, and she resisted the silence, and she brought BBK back? That would also be a death sentence for me. So this is an example of a risky offense that had really a... 85% chance of success at best, because if I got resisted, I would lose here. So don't. that's the perfect kind of offense I'm telling you guys not to use in high-end Guild Wars. Like, if your guild is pretty casual like mine, you could throw these kind of offenses in every once in a while if you're stuck and you don't want to spend forever tank and spanking. But in general, this is not a good offense. Top. Um, yeah, this is pretty much 100% uh, because... I don't know, Rimuru is going to dumpster the Charlotte uh, and Meteor Cowork counters that AOL pretty hard. So this is pretty solid. Um, I suppose if the Charlotte was super beast or something, I still might have lost. But overall, I think this is a low chance of losing. Bottom, we keep seeing this defense. That's an easy one. That should be pretty much 100%. Top, this is solid. Alandi is not going to lose to this defense. I suppose worst case scenario, Belion knocks Landy out of stealth and they abuse her. But because Violet is going to be glued to a blue unit um, and Rem is not going to hit Landy, the only way for me to lose is if... There's really no way to lose, <laughs> honestly. So top is pretty solid. Bottom... Yeah, bottom's pretty solid too. Um... Yeah, because once ML Selene gets her S3 off, we kind of can't die, right? Because there's no blind to deny souls. ML Selene could have soloed this as long as she gets her S3 off. And they have no way of stopping that. Rimuru could pop her in one shot, maybe, if they had enough buffs. But as soon as she gets the S3 on, because Maid is there to guarantee that happening, we could not lose. This one looks like we lost a bunch of units. This is kind of a bad offense, pretty risky. I would grade this like a, a C plus at best. So looks like the idea here was um, use AOL to cleanse the team, have FCC here to make sure ML Selene survive because they don't have anything that goes through Aureus like uh, burns or anything, right? So the idea here was have ML Selene survive long enough to get the S3 off and use her, whatever, um, S2 passive to cleanse any possible stuns on ML Selene. And then she S3s and solos their entire team. 
Um, but theoretically, we could have had some bad luck. Like if they don't land crits on ML Selene so she doesn't counter or she doesn't proc the special sword that cleanses blind. Theoretically, we could have lost. So looks like we lost two units. This is a pretty risky one. So this is not a good offense. The bottom one... Uh, that's pretty close to 100%. I suppose we could have lost um, if we just missed on... B+, plus, I guess, because theoretically we could have missed on Riot a billion times, right? But it looks like I factored that in by bringing in the crowd to horse it. So I assume the strategy here was Soulburn, one-shot the Landy, and then just kind of have Crow and LQC go on Riot. And eventually they would die. And because of the extinction, Landy could not be brought back. So the vast majority of the damage is done. So that, that's not a bad one. Top. Uh, B+. Plus. There is a risk here that uh, S10... Anytime you bring S10A against Landy or Landy against S10A, those S1s, sometimes they can just blast Landy in the face... But the good thing about this team is Crow would never horse Landy. But um, this is like a B, I guess. With some really bad luck, I could have lost this. But in general, Landy is very strong against Maid. And we don't have a revive or anything in case that Crow gets low. Or is on Holy Sack or something. The bottom one, 100%. There's literally, I mean, Violet could have soloed this like you saw before. But with Rwanda there too and Rimuru, 100% chance of winning. And I don't think we have to go into every single one, but you guys should probably kind of get the gist of it by now, right? You should be able to look at your own offense, kind of have a rough idea of your chances of success based on what the defense is and what you're bringing. In the beginning as a newer player, you know, it's not always, because I'm making it sound super easy, right? But if you don't have the right heroes or all your gear is really bad, then yeah, against certain defenses, you're not going to have an answer. Like if you were up against this, but for some reason you don't have anything, you don't have Meteor Carry, you don't have Champ Z, you don't have Della, but you don't have anything, then yeah, obviously some defenses will be very challenging for you. But the thing is, anytime you run into those situations, take note of it and be like, I really felt helpless against that defense. What unit did I need to make that work? And almost always there's a reason, like, uh, or there's an option, like, I know some of my guildies against these kind of defenses use super high F res Elena's. Like, there's no defense has only one answer to it, right? Defenses are much harder to build than offenses. So there's always a way. Just think about what you're losing to and, uh, you know, come up with your own ideas. Um, these are my defenses, I guess. Um, decent considering it's top 100. But overall, I hope that kind of helps some of you guys get a sense of, you know, how to make decent Guild Wars offenses. If there's any other burning questions, let me know in the comment section below. Again, I have that other video on top 10 Guild Wars offense tips, but I was trying to condense it down to the biggest mistake people make, which is assuming that everything will go well and trying to show you guys examples of safe offenses and risky, dumb offenses like um, some of the ones I showed you. So anyways, thanks for watching. Till next time, boys. Peace out.